So I'm Gamo. Most of the guys know me here. Uh, the, the topic what I'm going to talk about is not about any teaching today. So all my friends, friends relax. Okay. Just I wanted to share some experience. It's not about tricks or tips. Okay. It's just what I gathered from my own experience and from the senior examiners who has been done this exam for the last 10 years. Okay. I'm not going to bore with this day one and day two. So these exams is of two days, intermediate and short cases, clinicals, and four viva tables on the day two. Right. The main thing is the game changer is the day one. 60 to 70 percent of your results, the decision is made on day one, guys. I'm just repeating this. Day one is very very important, and the day two can confirm the decision taken on day one. And you can you can change a bit if you do very well in your viva, right? Everyone say first impression is the best impression. Okay, when you're going for any short cases, try to nail the first case. I'm telling you, any examiners, if you go inside the first case, if you nail them confidently, once it relaxes the examiners because they don't have to be skeptical. And you as a confident man, you can sail through that very well. So whenever you go in the clinical bay, the first short case, just nail it. If you nail it, your score is going to be above 72. Take it from me. If not, at least create impression for the second case. If not, just forget the station, focus on the next one. Right, short, case, short cases. I will rather say it as a spotter's. It is only spotters. You have to get the diagnosis as early as possible. Okay? You diagnose is the key for short cases. So if you mention it first, as soon as you go in, tell the diagnosis, then they, they will go to, you don't have to examine. For example, in my short cases, upper limb, I got rheumatoid hand, I got gouty hand, I didn't examine any hand. Tell the diagnosis, then four minutes you will be discussed, you will be going into literature, and you'll score very well. Which is, this is especially for short cases. Focus on obvious findings. If there is any subtle findings, please mention it. Don't ignore the subtle findings. But focus on obvious findings, particularly. Try to get the x-rays in three minutes. That means you're going to score well. Okay? Treatment plan approach. If you're going to the approach for the short cases, that means you're going to score more than six. Literature, again, Literature, will, especially for me personally, my exam was saved only by literature every places. Okay? Because that compensate wherever you go, wherever one of the station, someone will, some examiners will play with you. To compensate that, please, please take it from me. Literature is all the base of this exam. Some, most of the guys will say, oh, literature, nobody asked me the literature. Nobody will ask you the literature, but if you do very well, they will ask you the literature. Okay, when to present the literature? That's a lot of questions. Even I had a doubt when to present the literature. Literature is like a desert. You have to do it at the right time after nailing all the basic questions. If you mention it in the first place, then it will backfire you and then you lose the game. Right. Especially short cases, when the examiner asks you, can you ask a couple of questions? I had this doubt. What questions do you have to ask? What questions? These are the questions, basic questions. If any case you have come across, just keep these four questions in your mind. What's your problem? How is it affecting you? What treatment you had so far? And what is your expectations? These are the questions I had in my mind and that helped for almost all sort of cases. Intermediate case is completely different. So you, don't have, you have to have a very good detailed history for that. These are the sort of cases which is within the basics of FRGS curriculum, okay? Shoulder, elbow, hand. I can tell you each and every one, if you know about, if you have this diagnosis of these cases, at least two of the cases will come for your exam. It is just a snapshot. You can just take this. These are the basic curriculum. Whether the exam is going to be in Sheffield University Hospital or whether it is going to be in District General Hospital, these are the basic curriculum they have to test for the upper limb, particularly for short cases. Remember C-spine, upper limb, always think about C-spine. 
sort cases for lower limb. These are the sort cases. Again, any exam, these will be the sort cases. At least two, you will get it. And particularly, I want to focus on the foot examination, test plainness. Don't always commit yourself about deep post dysfunction. The most common cause for the pest planus is telanavic arthritis. Please make sure you examine the patient and then commit yourself whether it's deep post or telanavic arthritis. Again, for pest cavers, we have the tendency to say CMT all the time, but it could be CMT or it could be other causes such as residual CTE. So, unless you examine, don't commit yourself because I know most of the guys who just straight away commit deep post dysfunction and get trapped and find difficult to come out of it. So keep these things in your mind, especially for the short cases. Right. And thoracolumbar spine, particularly for the lower limb, always that could be a spine cases, scoliosis, think about it. And then syndromic. These are the seven or eight syndromic cases that they have to test for. That doesn't mean that you have to find the diagnosis, that you have to label the syndrome. They may ask you, if nail patella syndrome, they may ask you to examine the knee. If it is Marfan syndrome, they may ask me to examine the spine. Spangled shoulder, they can ask you to examine the shoulder. So you don't have to mention the syndrome. Still, you can pass, but keep the basics right. Whatever the case, whatever the syndrome, don't get flustered. You just do the basic examination, what the examiner asks you to examine, and then you'll come out easily. Okay, now come to intermediate case. The people who are starting with intermediate case, they are very lucky because they have time to breathe. They can go and see the patient, and they can ask history. So they are lucky one. Hot cases, you have to start straight away into the game. Especially for intermediate case, read the GP letter which is given to your hand. Most of the time, we don't read it fully because we go in and see the patient, see the examiner, and we start, start straight away to the patient. Tell you the GP letter have a clue about the diagnosis and what the examiner is expecting from you. That is very, very important. So as soon as the letter has been given to you, please read the letter fully. Okay. Try, well, it's very, very difficult, but pray to God that you have a complex case. If you have a complex case, Examiners hunt for good points to pass you. If it's a simple case, they want you to be very slicker. At the same time, they look for finer detail. They can easily fail you. But complex case are the one which saved my life, particularly for intermediate case. Intermediate history, focus on primary complaint. Sometimes the patient may not have pain. The patient may not have deformity. They may come with for some other reason. So try to get what is the primary reason they have come from? So what is the problem? Where is the problem? It could be central problem or it could be peripheral problem. Always think about spine. Second question in the intermediate, when you're taking history, focus whether it is a spine problem or it's a peripheral problem. That will win the case. If you forget completely about the spine and you keep on dragging the history, it will be very, very difficult to come back. Okay. And then also make sure you rule out is it congenital problem or acute problem? Third question. And is it any history of trauma? These are the four questions which will give you the diagnosis by going to surgical C very quickly so that you don't lose time as well. Next, while taking history, you need to know, know about this Oxford score, particularly for the lower limbs. It is very difficult for me to remember the, all these things. I am a simple man, I keep it simple. So I ask all these questions by one, one single question. Can you walk upstairs and have a shower, come down, put your shoes, can you go for shopping in your car? That's it. This is for Oxford score, daily activity of living. You keep this one sentence and that finishes the Oxford score. And then when you're asking history, make sure in the first what treatment you had, either it could be operative or non-operative treatment, or the patient could be waiting for surgical. So you need to ask this question. And final question is, what do you want me to do for you? That will answer all the questions for the examiner who is really jumping to trap you. If you ask this question, sometimes the patient will say, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this, I don't want anything. And that should be the answer as well. 
and then they can poke on you whether you need surgical treatment or what you else you will do that goes to the discussion with it and then the medications so i keep all this medical when you ask medical history you ask about medication history when you ask about medication history you ask about allergies history particularly for orthopedics you ask for steroid history and anticoagulants as well okay particularly mention them are you taking steroids are you taking warfarin ask them particularly okay and then for smoking see as you know social history you ask for as been mentioned in the war we course that's very very useful you know you can just finish the history in 4 minutes time but you can always tell the patient like anything you want to add and you can summarize to the patient at least you have a chance that if you want to add anything the patient will tell back to you oh i you missed this history okay then you can add it to the and then you can present to the examiner if you missed any important key history for example if you miss warfarin history that's it you won't pass that stage then he will be skeptical throughout for the clinical exam bit as well so keep the history if we keep the history very tight and clean you will pass the exam next by end of the day one everyone will be in the same mood okay it's a very difficult time especially at the end of day one we never know what is whether we have done wrong or right but this will be the status for almost all 70 to 90% of the candidates so right sorry yeah thank you damo to the patient i think it's uh, finish your history history uh, succinctly and summarize directly to the patient say could i just summarize what we've discussed today you are blah 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 you're a 75 year old person with right shoulder pain who's presenting after 3 months who've tried uh, physiotherapy and injection and uh, you're on uh, warfarin and uh, you're asthmatic you're uh, you have had no previous surgery and uh, your you today you'd like us to just deal with your pain have i missed anything yes i, I agree with you Sean. i think i think that last bit um, i i i practiced to ask that question to the patient i asked i practiced to ask them is there anything else at the end is there anything else you'd like to tell me about <laughs> and i think if you have a nice practice in that in that knee that you want to do replacement on or um warfarin which i can't stop at all for because i had the ease so if if, if a, you know it's always worth asking that question at the end um, exactly dami just said uh, asked the question about what equipment to take to the yeah. exam um i would say actually don't take very much because they'll provide you with most things if you have to take anything take the things that you need to do the hand exam the fu- um sort of hand function exam so a coin a key and something for fine touch don't worry about a hammer or a goniometer everyone gets obsessed with those they will provide those if they're needed for the station exactly yeah, you don't have to I took the key i took a key and a coin and a pen and that's and all. Yeah. Uh, yeah but they should provide you with everything so it's not essential even if you go for your exam they will tell you you don't need to carry anything with you but no one will stop you obviously but make sure you don't carry a mobile phone yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a medical dictionary <laughs> or, 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 rather i have mobile the bell